So welcome to the next video about sociological research methods. And what we're thinking about today is, what are the differences between primary and secondary data? And what are the strengths and limitations of these different types of data? So if we look at this slide, we've again got the research methods divided, but they're in different groups this time. There's something different between the ones on the left-hand side and the ones on the right-hand side. So questionnaires, interviews, experiments and observations are all research methods that sociologists would use, as are the use of official statistics, the use of personal and historical documents and the use of the mass media. But there's something different between the two. What the difference is, is that the data that's here, the sociologists would collect for themselves. So the sociologists would ask people questions, would sit down and chat with people, would create experiments to do on people, would observe people in their everyday um, lives. Whereas these ones are all things that the sociologists could use to help them find out. So the government collects official statistics. The sociologists might read someone's diary from a certain time period or perform content analysis on the mass media. So, what the names that we give to these two types of data is primary and secondary data. Primary data is data that the sociologist has collected first hand. Secondary data is data that the, sociology, the sociologist uses, but it's been collected by another agent. And all that word agent means is just it's been collected by somebody else, whether that's the government or it's been made by the mass media or it's a diary entry written by somebody. So the strengths and limitations of both of these types of data. And we're just going to go through a couple of strengths and limitations for each. So a st strength of primary data is that the sociologist has a high level of control because they're, they're deciding what to research, how to research it, and what to do with the, the, the results. So this means that they can get a high level of both reliability and validity if they choose to. Remember, reliability is about it being replicated and getting similar results. Validity is about it being an accurate reflection of something. The other strength of this is that the sociologists could research groups who have previously been ignored. So, for instance, a sociologist might look at um, the role of, of home workers amongst uh, Bengali women um, who might not be part of traditional sources of data such as official statistics side of primary data is that it can be very expensive for the sociologists to collect, sending out lots of um, questionnaires or training people to be able to do interviews and also it can be very time consuming. A few weeks ago we looked at Venkatesh's study about ethics and we saw that you know he gave up three years of his life um, to follow the gang. Also, might, there might be lots of barriers which prevent the sociologist um, from doing the research themselves. So a barrier might be such as a language difficulty. So if, say, for instance, I wanted to research um, Bengali women who are home workers. I don't speak Bengali, so I wouldn't be able to do that research. Or if I wanted to look at gangs, I'm not really sure that I would be able to join a gang um, to be able to research them. So there are lots of barriers which may prevent the sociologists from right finding their research group. So we're now going to take a quick look at some of the strengths of secondary data. So secondary data is using something that's already been produced by somebody else. And it might be using official statistics, it might be using another sociologist's research or it might be using personal and historical documents or mass media. So the strengths of secondary data is that it's quick and it is cheap, almost like going through a drive through So say, for instance, I wanted to find out about um, the uptake of sociology at A-level by boys and girls across the country. I can just go onto the internet and find that data. It's readily available and it's free. If I wanted to do that, find out that using primary data, I would have to go to every sixth form college or in every school and ask people what the... And that would take me far too long and it would be far too expensive. Another advantage is that official statistics, so data which is collected by the government, covers the whole of the UK. Oh, I've just missed out. The Shetlands up there, sorry. Um, covers the whole of the UK. 
So what we can say is that it's very representative. We came across this word a couple of weeks ago, so representative. So, for instance, every 10 years the government send a questionnaire to every house in the country, which is called the census, and by law people have to fill it in. That's truly representative data because it covers the entire target population, the whole of the UK. Also, secondary data is useful for creating comparisons through time. So say, for instance, I was looking at the role of women within society, I would be able to compare what was happening in the 1960s using secondary data with what's happening today, um, which I'm, I wouldn't be able to do if I was just researching by myself. So the limitations of secondary data is that quite often they have a hidden agenda. Oop moving the picture they have a hidden agenda so official statistics might be created by the government and obviously the government is a political party who wants to be kept in power this might be hidden therefore this compromises the reliability and validity of the data um, which the sociologist has to be careful of when using secondary data also it might have been created for a different purpose and therefore it might not be precisely fit for the sociologist's purpose. So one sociologist may have researched gangs to look at um, the role of um, drugs within how the gang behave. And another sociologist might want, then want to use this research to find out about the relationships between men and women within a gang. And it might not be exactly fit for purpose. The third difficulty, or the third limitation of secondary data, is to do with what we call the operationalisation. So, operationalise. This isn't going to fit on, is it? Oh, 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 oh. Yep. Uh, operationalisation of key terms. And this means that one person may define the word differently than somebody else. So, when a sociologist is doing research, they define their key terms, they operationalise their key terms. However, if you're using secondary data, the first person may have operationalised a key term differently. So a good example of the different ways that people may operationalise a key term is to do with binge drinking. In my opinion, binge drinking is going out and getting mortal of a weekend. However, a doctor would say that someone who drinks more than three units of alcohol in one night would be a binge drinker. Three units of alcohol is like um, a couple of little bottles of beer or a couple of small glasses of wine. So the operationalisation would then affect the validity and the reliability of the data again. So, a quick look through the strengths and limitations of primary and secondary data. Remember, primary data is that which is collected by the sociologist, and secondary data is data that's been used by the sociologist but was collected by somebody else before. Remember, you might need to watch the video a couple of times and you need to make notes ready for the lesson. Good luck.